Fermentation is the metabolic, a metabolic process of um, yeast. So during the course of fermentation, the yeast reproduce, they eat, they build up stores of uh, their food source um, for a next generation, for they go into a dormant phase and they build up reserves of food. All that happens during fermentation and the byproduct of fermentation is actually the alcohol and carbon dioxide that we are actually looking for. So um, in making wort, what you're really trying to do is make the best home for yeast you possibly can um, so that they will then give you the best beer you possibly can get. But it's not in the interest of the yeast to make sure your beer is the best because what you're really looking for is their byproducts, the CO2 and alcohol. Um, that's why higher alcohol fermentations are more difficult because um, some yeast strains don't like to live in their own waste at uh, very high concentrations. At our level, uh, a beer will ferment usually three to four days. Um, at the end of three to four days, hopefully three days, um, is target. We will have skimmed yeast off for future pitches and then we will we call cold crash um, and that involves the rapid uh, decrease in fermentation temperature from our, t our target uh, beer temperature uh, during fermentation of 68 down to 38. Um, the goal being uh, to drop the yeast we call the yeast load, and that's the number of ce yeast cells still in suspension, drop them down to a very low level, uh, let's say um, one to two million cells per milliliter, um, so that we can then rack the beer or transfer it into kegs. That process takes about two, two, two days. So sometimes we'll leave it for three, depending on production cycle. Uh, b beer typically isn't in the tank for more than seven days. When it, when it comes to fermentation, the ideal one is cool your beer quick, put a lot of yeast in, and two weeks later you've got beer. Um, that's, that's the general, that's, that's, that's the best scenario. Um, if you over pitch or you under pitch, you're gonna, you're gonna get a different effect, a different ester in the, in the beer. Under pitching, you're gonna, and pitching being how much yeast you pour into the, into the batch, under pitching, it stresses the yeast because they've got this big sugar environment. They're creating alcohol. Their population is low. So you get, you get um, different byproducts that they squeeze out from the stress. You over pitch, they're going to they're gonna eat it all up and you may not catch those esters that you're hoping to get, the, the fruitiness and um, what you're looking for in, in your target beer. Um, if you get uh, a fermentation where you're not clean, uh, you got um, you have an infection in your uh, in one of your vessels didn't get cleaned quite good enough, and there's some bacteria or some wild yeast. Then it can get crazy. It can it can bubble up and, and just spew all over the place and get sour. It can taste like uh, like dirty dishwater. It's uh, there's a number of things that can go wrong if you don't start clean, um, and that's at any point too. Um, the yeast are gonna they metabolize like we metabolize, and um, they can only metabolize what's within their, their range. So there's, there's residual sugars that they just can't, they can't break down that, that long chain of sugar. But you get your uh, wild yeast in there, they can get those. So they'll, uh, they'll start eating those, and that's where you get your overcarbonation and um, those off flavors, the sour flavors, the, the dirty flavors. Um, and, and then there's, there's the, those breweries that are, all they do is sours and they know how to manipulate those yeasts and, and, and get the good sour flavors and not the dirty ones. Lag time I think is something that gets blown out of proportion um, with in home brewing because we're looking at certain parameters on the professional level but we're not checking the beer every like two hours. We're not saying oh it didn't start by now like oh shit. <laughs> 